In the second grade, I wanted to be a balloon blower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a few things. I wanted to be a carpenter. I don't know, but I feel like every kid had the dream of being like a marine biologist when they were younger. So I definitely had that dream, which I mean, <laughs> don't even think I knew what it was. I was into like sciencey things, you know, so scientist or, you know, I don't know if I ever wanted to be an astronaut necessarily, but yeah. Growing up, I saw myself as the only option being like having a family. I wanted to launch the rockets, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have passing fancies. I wanted to be a veterinarian. I wanted to be a landscape architect. Yeah, exactly. Like who doesn't freaking like dolphins? You know, I went to Joe's Crab Shack and there's the guy who walks around and makes it, <laughs> balloon animals for kids. And I, I want him to be that. Humans develop routines and habits as a way of reducing the number of decisions we have to make every day. If we didn't have these routines, we'd be overwhelmed by the amount of tiny little decisions we'd have to be making every minute of the day. It's a beneficial practice for reducing mental fatigue, but at what point does routine go too far? How do you know when it's time to break free of the routine? Just a few years ago, before moving into this van, my life looked drastically different. For so much of my life, I just followed this path of what I thought I was supposed to do. It's like I was following this cultural routine that landed me as a mechanical engineer, chasing after money and impressive job titles. I wanted to be successful. So much so that I started to lose sight of the things that I cared about the most. It kind of felt like I was living someone else's life. I had it set in my mind that someday I'd be happy if I just made a little more money, if I just had this job title, then I'd be successful. I was completely living in hopes of some future reality that may never come. So I did the only thing I could think at the time to feel a little bit like myself again. I started riding my bike to work. Just by riding my bike to work instead of sitting in traffic all morning, my quality of life took this massive leap forward. It's like I gained back a piece of who I was. I, I wasn't tired at work, I was in a better mood, I, I was having fun every single morning of the week. With this small change, it's like a switch flipped in my mind, I started realizing if this tiny change can make such a difference in my life, what else can I change? Today is June 21st, 2019. It's the summer solstice. And um, just last week, I quit my job. For the first time in my life, I am self-employed. And starting today, I leave for a road trip for the entire summer. It's gonna be an adventure. It's like I did it all right. From any outsider's perspective, I was successful. I had the engineering job, I was married, I was on my way to buying a home. I wanted to be successful, but I didn't know what that was. And so, I don't know, maybe there's a part of it that I wanted to impress people, and so I just wanted to get the best degree that I could, and wanted to make money because that's just kind of what we're told, is that if you make a lot of money, that means you're successful. It's like I went all the way down this path to success, but I didn't feel successful. I guess I've basically dropped that idea and started looking for my own definition of success. I was taking this summer as an opportunity to travel the country while establishing my own brand as a videographer. I was planning to meet new people and meet up with old friends and talk about what success means to them. 
hoping to gain some insight on what different people value in their lives. So the trip had to start at Trestle, my home bike park in Winter Park, Colorado. I met my good friend Jacob there, but the weather had different plans for us. Okay, maybe we won't be riding Trestle this weekend after all because it snowed so much that they're closed for today at least. Thankfully, after an entire weekend of snow, the sun finally came out and gave us one more chance to ride before I left Colorado. get down the sickest rock roll or the you can hit the biggest jump or whatever but if you don't have quality people in your life in order to share that moment with why did you do it it's just like it's not about like oh I want to post this on Instagram or whatever it's about sharing that moment real time with real people that you care about Jacob is one of those people who is really good at bringing people together He's good at planning and inviting a bunch of people to go on rides, so he's the reason I ended up in Jackson, Wyoming. I'm officially leaving Colorado today. I'm hitting the road and headed to Jackson, Wyoming. Look at this freaking rainbow. How is this real? We had this huge group of people in Jackson that seemed like it just slowly grew the entire week as you have friends of friends joining in and we had this big campsite at the top of Teton Pass and so we were able to just hitchhike Teton Pass and have all these people hopping in and out of different rides it was just it was such a good time to, to catch up with old friends and make new friends there's something so special about camping and mountain biking that just accelerates friendship like nothing else I know of. <laughs> Success for me is just like happiness, to be honest. And like the type of happiness where like you forget about time. Like that's the number one thing is like forgetting about time. I love it when the hours just like melt away. Whether that's biking all day with your friends or like getting really into a project that you love and like you love the work that you're doing like these days i really love the big picture of mountain biking i love camping camping with my friends and riding all day and yeah. i like the mastery of it like trying to master something is really enjoyable but i also like just going on big rides with my friends and being lost in the backcountry and not really thinking about anything else well, if you surround yourself with the people who care about your success they're not the ones who care if you have a house or like a nice supercar or something, you know? They're the people who care about you like doing the things that you love to do. All right, so I've been in Jackson for like three days now and I'm driving to the airport right now to pick up my buddy David. What? Yo! What up, dude? He lives in Northern California, so he actually made the trip to fly out here just to ride with us over 4th of July, and then he's just gonna hitch a ride with me in the van all the way back to California. So, got a friend to drive all the way to the West Coast with, so it's gonna work out perfect. That stupid jump was such a white whale for me. I would come in and was like, I do not have the speed for that. To the point where I was laying in my tent on one of the nights so that I could like do it in my head. And so I'm like laying in my sleeping bag, just like, I suddenly just had this like calmness. I was like, all right, here we go. Yes! 
I only had to take one day of PTO to fly out and do that four day trip and drive all the way back and everything. And it was a crazy adventure and I was an absolute wreck at work the next day because I had slept for two hours before because we got back to San Jose at like 3 a.m. because we'd been riding bikes in the morning in Wyoming before driving your van back. And uh, like, those are the things that make me happy. Like, we go on these trips and these trips become the sole focus and I don't think about work. I don't think about home. Like when I go on vacation to go on a snowboard trip or a vacation to go on a mountain bike trip, I set my outlook to no notifications. I will not read and I set uh, auto reply like, I'm out of the office. If you need anything from me, talk to this guy instead because you're not getting anything from me until I get back. Because I don't think about work. I This matters too much to me. This is the part of life that is required for me. Yeah, I work hard in my job and I do what I need to do at work and I care about the work I do and I get the job done. But once the job's done, I put it away. The real success is what do you do with it and how stoked can you make yourself with that time that you've given yourself on some mountain somewhere and just maximizing time, not wasting time. If you have a weekend, don't sit on the couch to ride your damn bike. Man, something about road tripping across the country, once you hit the ocean, every time, every time it's super special. So stoked. We made it to Santa Cruz. As I left Santa Cruz, this was really the first time on my trip that I had a lot of time to myself. Before this, I was with a bunch of people in Jackson and had David to drive all the way to the West Coast with, so once I started working my way north from there, that's when the fear and anxiety really started to hit me. Probably like 20 minutes from the border of Oregon right now. I drove all day from San Jose and I'm not quite sure where I'm staying tonight, but. It's crazy how anxious I was all day. I guess I'm still kind of getting used to the whole self-employment thing and working my own schedule. It was like the reality had finally set in that I had taken this leap and was now in a free fall state of trying to figure out so many things I don't know how to do, building my own company and how to make a living doing this. There's just so much left for me to learn and I started to get pretty overwhelmed. It was so paradoxical because from the outside I was living this dream lifestyle, driving a van up the coast and had this picture perfect lifestyle, but on the inside was just so overwhelmed by trying to make a living with videography. Needless to say, it was a relief when I was able to meet back up with Jacob, this time joined by his girlfriend Olivia, and we're headed to the Mecca of mountain biking. Alright, this is it. I'm approaching the US-Canadian border, so about to cross up there. I'm following Jacob and Olivia right now into Canada, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully see you in Canada. I made it to Canada. <laughs> that actually was way more intense than I thought it was gonna be. It turns out when you're unemployed and living in a van, 
You definitely get some extra interrogation at the border. So stoked to be in Canada. It's sick here. I always thought I had to follow this plan and this laid out map for what I wanted to do. And going, like when you want to change your career and you have the chance to get an advanced degree, I mean, that just seemed like the, the, the thing to do, you know? I get so stoked when I see people deviate from the norm and not do that. Like my brother recently like dropped out of college because he's just like, this is not what I want to be doing. This is not gonna give me the life that I want. I'm so proud of him. Like that sounds weird, right? That I'm proud of my brother for dropping out of college. But I am because he's staying true to like what he knows is going to make him feel successful. And it's not, it's not college. It's not for everyone. From a really young age, like I always said, I would put relationships before money. And so I grew up with this idea that you either could have a lot of money or you could have really good relationships. I never really saw an example of both. So in my like child's mind, I decided I'm gonna choose relationships over money. So that's like been a whole thing that I've had to work through now, realizing that you actually can make a lot of money doing things that you love and that's not a bad thing and that doesn't take away whatsoever from your relationships. Like money is just energy, it's a tool, it's how you use it. Um, and I have so many people now in my life who've made so much money and are successful in that capitalistic standard, but they've done it in a way that's in complete alignment with who they are and how they want to show up in the world and they haven't compromised their values with it. I originally hadn't planned to go any further than Whistler, but I reached out to Isabel and Antoine, a couple that I had followed for a while on Instagram. They also live in a van and they were both engineers and are both mountain bikers, so I knew I had to try and meet up with them. When I found out that they were in Revelstoke, I knew it was more than worth the six hour drive to meet them. So I've been living in the van with Antoine for the past two years. And it's been the greatest time of my life. <laughs> we have to choose early, yeah? when we're young, what we're gonna do in life. Uh, I guess I never really knew what I really want to do. And if you still ask me, I, I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. So since I didn't really know exactly what I want to do, I, I went for something that had a good paycheck. I decided to, to be an electrical engineer because I loved it. It's not about money at all. Like, I never cared about money. Like, I care about doing something I love. Yeah, it's like where I see myself in five years. Uh, they always ask you that in job interviews and I always lied about that. I have no idea where I'm going to be in five years and I don't really want to know, you know? It, it's, it's okay not to know. Yeah, I don't have long-term plans. And I, I think this is how you can appreciate every moment. Because like, if you're always looking for something, you might be disappointed because you're not reaching that. But like, just living the moment, yeah, like, yeah, just enjoy the moment. This conversation with Isabel and Antoine unlocked something in me. I had become so preoccupied with how I was gonna make a living and build my company and finding what success means to me that I had nearly forgotten to just stop and appreciate what was happening in front of me. I am stoked to be pursuing filmmaking and, and building my brand as a videographer but that's not gonna be what I remember about this summer. It's gonna be the moments that I shared with people that will come to mind first. My time in Whistler and Squamish became this crazy reunion of all these people from my summer. It worked out perfectly where I was able to ride with Jacob and Olivia there, and David was able to come up from California, and then a week later, Alex and Corbin, who I had ridden with in Jackson, were there in Squamish. So it was just this incredible reunion of people from my summer in a place with some of the best mountain biking in the world. It's like the flow state, that I think. you Just the, the chaos of it all, when it's coming at you at that speed, you can't really think about anything else. So. 
and you just keep improving on your bike. You never reach like the end. It's so good, like you're going faster, you're doing more features, you're looking at stuff you, you thought you would never do and now you're doing it. So like you're constantly challenging yourself and it's so good. And you can't explain why this sport unlocks this level of nirvana. Because success is just really being happy with what you've got. It's like you're living life right now. Success are the things that more like 16 year old me would have defined as success. It's not about so much what you do, but the fact that what you're doing is making you happy and you have people in your life that are there supporting you. I mean, I don't really know what else you yeah. could want. I originally broke out of my routine because I had to stop focusing on money and job status and all of these things that didn't matter to me. Sometimes the only reason you need to break out of routine is so that you can appreciate everything that's happening around you right now.